Chris, if you want to talk about the, the first video you picked. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so the first one is uh, it's, it's from a channel called Funny Tips. Uh, Shane Fazen is the uh, uh, the founder of that. Uh, a really young M M MMA type of dude. But I, I, I picked him because I, I've been following his work for, for years. He's a really open open-minded and well-rounded uh, individual. Like he's trained in traditional arts too. Um, and he interviews, if you take a look at his stuff, he's, in, he's interviewed every, everybody from Kung Fu guys to, to, to mixed martial artists, to like specific sport players, you know? So um, yeah, so the first one, the, the title is uh, six, six, step, uh, six Steps, uh, sorry, No Gym, Memorize the Six Steps Solo Footwork Drill. Um, and uh, I particularly zoned in on timestamp at nine nine fifty one nine minutes and 51 seconds where he actually does um and you guys will probably see this uh later uh you'll see he does a, a movement that uh, karate guys are all very familiar with the low block the gedan barai and the counter punch the the zuki right down the center okay um and you know i i particularly liked it because first of all the, the first connection i saw was oh there's a gedan barai there's a zuki right there like a a yakazuki right there like it, it's it's textbook verbatim biomechanics right there but the difference is and this is where the this this is where the beauty is um the difference is, is is in the way he uses it right so you see one of the things that i so so the way he used it was he used it as a counterbalance so he used the weight of the fist the dropping motion of that lower block which we are all very familiar with when we learn this kihon we, we're, we're taught to drop and i think uh you know uh, if I may make a connection to something that you've done before, you, you, you've you emphasized in your videos, um, Lee, the dropping, relaxed, yeah. snapping, kind of whipping motion of that thing. So beautiful, right? Like, so the, as you can see, the biomechanics is there. So he uses it as a counterbalance to kind of move your body backwards. And he uses also as a tactical bait to bait the guy thinking low and, and going high. And, and that low high concept is used all across fighting on the planet it's an international concept where you're going low and you're going high but um i capitalized on that video because it, it you see the thing is as part of karate unity when i when i look at these things i i even though it's from another art or or whatnot i i see the biomechanical connection number one which i think we can clearly agree that it they are doing the low block middle punch technique um, but then it's the way it's used that i loved so the way it's used as a is a counterbalance Kind of like a bait to to a counter, um, and so I mean that's just one snapshot of a use. But you know, um, I think we can agree that using that idea, the concept behind it, you can use that for various of things. So going down low, you can use it as a clearance. You can use it as a trap uh, to counter. Um, snapping your head back, you you're getting out of range and then coming back in. And then as you can see, like uh, when, if when you cue that video and take a look at it. It's a very short and fast, snappy, aggressive type of movement, which can be used on the inside, um, you know. And 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 so anyway, I, I picked that for those reasons. For yeah, I mean, I mean one yeah. one thing I get get from you, and um, I, I like about what, what you what you get up to in, in your videos is, um, for, for me, cat cat is always like a close range kind of fighting system, and yeah. I think that's the way it really comes to life. And I mean, I, I think what you do with it quite well is is you. You take those principles and concepts to that close range, and you expand that range. Um, so you got more of this like consensual fighting, kind of back and forth fighting, and using the ideas and concepts in the kata at that range. And I think this is a really, um, really, really like key example that this idea of, of, of like snapping your weight back to drive in or snapping your weight down. Because like you said, you know, like the way I like to use it is to move in to trap arms to get nice and close. And I've seen you do similar things with it as well. But that's when you're really close. So when, when you've got that, that distance and, um, you know, it, it's just nice to see you can use the same principles. Maybe not. Uh, you mentioned this before. It doesn't have to be Guy Dambaray. It, it, it's yeah. the, the concept of the body movement, which you picked up on. Um, yeah. First thing I thought, by the way, when I saw this was um, we have um, a character called MP, um, sometimes called Wine Shoe. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It was Wine strange. In, in the short cam version, there's always like a, like a, like a big leaning back motion. Whereas yeah. when most styles always do that get on right you know, facing the front. So the first yeah. thing I thought was, oh, that, that's a very MP style. And then I started seeing, um, I think, if, if I've got the video right again, or I could be making this up, I think there's a little bit of like a shoulder roll to it as he, as he does that. Um, yeah. And then I started thinking about, you know, the arms moving and the whip through 
and he's already flown onto that reverse punch as well. And I think right. it was nice to see. It was like a split second motion. Um, yeah. It just reminded that you know when when in combat, you know you got you got to move fast and everything's got to be connected. So I picked yeah. up on that, and I can imagine like that long range thing is not really my my my, my style of, of bunkai, but everything you you talked about, I I could then bring it back into the close range and you know. Yeah. Make it work. Yeah, like I mean that that's the thing. I mean just just what you just mentioned just now. I mean that's that just kind of shows your your level of adaptability. You know, like uh, I it's frustrating. You know, when 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 you're dealing with other uh, karate guys that that they're, they're they're so focused on just one particular aspect of that kihon, right? Which is this and this. You know, and the moment you deviate from that, you know, either with an angle or a head movement or you shrimp, you stack your bones in a different way, or you start to look like a sports player, it's huge taboo and it's bad. And it's an insult against different masters and styles and organizations. And to me, like, I, I just think when you go down that path of rationale, it's very unhealthy. You know, the way I like to see it is, is, is all these videos, like, even though, like, as you can see, like, you'll see that the choice of videos are, are non karate specific. They're all sports specific. Um, um, but uh, which leads me to my next point. I mean, sport is a great way to, to, I should say, uh, test. It's a good, it's not, it's not the way it's, it's a way. And, and, and in my opinion, it's this, it's one of the safest ways, right? And you can make it like, you know, the sport range is yes, it's consensual and yes, there's rule sets and all these things. Right. But the idea behind it can be adaptable to all kinds of contexts. People bash sport and they say, you know, it's not good for self-defense. It's it, You have to separate the two and stuff. My take is very, very different. My take is marry the two. Put the two together because they are both useful. And yeah, you have to be aware of the of the, 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 legal, con the legal context and all these things, but they're all very useful. Um, if you look at the big idea, you can adapt. Uh, to your point, like you can take, you can take that long motion and make it small by coming in. By coming in and, and let's just say your hand, like here, the Gedan Barai is long, but when, when you're using the Gedan Barai, at some point, your Gedan Barai is bent. Your arm is bent to go down. But if you're crashing in or someone's coming into you aggressively, you might get stuck at that range. Um, but you can still use that concept where you're kind of pushing down low, yeah. angling off, and shooting in. It might not be a punch. The Zuki is the idea behind it. It yeah. could be a grab. It can be an eye poke. It could be... Uh, a push off, a shove off to manipulate somebody, but the whole idea behind it is in this video, and that is, you snap back or you snap to the side, and you 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 kind of lunge forward using your core, I, and it's very tactical and and strategic, which yeah. I found useful. You know, yeah. Um, I I think we're we're gonna slide on to the next point anyway, um, with, with mm. your video too. But I I think it's a quick thing to mention there is yeah when you mentioned like like the the zuki the the, the punch or the thrust. Um, yeah, it, it's one one of my pet peeves with, with with the karate world is our fixation with names. Um, yes, yes. Um, because I feel what happens is we we give something a name and then we we pigeonhole what its uses and how, what it can be defined as. Um, I mean, without going into the history of how these things got the names anyway, I'm not going to yeah. do that today. But for me and my students, I I always say look, they, they've got a name because we need to be able to you know talk about it. Um, yeah. But think about it as a plane of motion or the trajectory of the technique. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a straight thrust, you know, yes. you got punch and elbow, palm strike, you know, a shoulder right. ball. It, yeah. it, it's all worked from that same kind of like that plane of motion, same with that like Gidan Barai. Um, you know, maybe yes. it's shoulders up, maybe it's, it's short, maybe it's extended, maybe it's pulling yes. back. But it's this idea of sweeping low is more important than what we do. But we'll, we'll move on to video two. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I'll, you introduce it and then we'll have a chat about this one as well. Sure. Yeah. So uh, second video again was uh, with uh, from the same uh, channel, Fight Tips. Uh, Shane Fazin was interviewing Ryan Garcia. And I don't know if you guys follow boxing. Um, I, lately, I've been following boxing and I follow it, especially when there's big fights. But uh, Ryan, Ryan Garcia, you know, he's an American pro boxer. Uh, his record's amazing. Uh, he's a silver lightweight champion. Um, and uh, the, the particular clip that I looked at was uh, at uh, 11, 11 minutes, uh, the, sorry, uh, yeah, minute 11 um, to, to, the, like, to the first uh, 11, uh, I think, seconds of, of that clip. So okay. it starts at minute 11. And um, 
to me, it was a philosophical, uh, a philosophical piece that kind of stood out. And it, and it, it made it, and I made a connection to the whole concept of Shu, Ha, and Ri. Um, but basically what they were talking to, they, they were both talking about, Ryan, Ryan was talking about how, you know, uh, fighters can basically break rules uh, of their movement. Like if they get taught a particular movement, like a cross or a jab, um, you know, you can deliver that. Like, I mean, when you're learning it, you can learn it textbook, you know, where you're kind of crossing your hands, you're emptying the cup, you're putting your chin down and all these kind of defensive kind of maneuvers, you're stacking your bones and all these things. But the point is, at the end of the day, you kind of, when you're actually competing and you're trying to get a, gain a tactical advantage over somebody else, you're going to do whatever you need to do to change these biomechanical principles to suit you and to, to basically kind of mold it in a way that you're going to win. You know what I mean? So yeah, to I me, heard. that kind of, that set off explosions in my head. And I was thinking, um, he, you know, he, I was I was thinking of these connections to Shu, Ha, and Ri, which is like Shu, you know, you guys are familiar with uh, or not. I'll just review it. Shu is the uh, is the copying phase where you're learning something. The Ha is you're adapting, you know, and the Ri is like you're letting go. You're, like, you're letting go of that steering wheel. You're just like going free, right? Um, and, and you're driving with pinkies, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, well, not really, but, uh, you know what I mean? But, um, so, you know, he, he was basically saying that, you know, and he, he was saying him personally, he breaks rules all the time when he's punching, you know, sometimes he'll just throw the jab out and he'll step in and jab or he'll turn and jab, or he'll just kind of, he'll kind of like stumble and jab. He'll fumble on his feet and jab because that'll cause, uh, you know, somebody to get a flinch response or something. So all of these things, and then he, he kind of like, he, he pointed out and spoke to, uh, like he talked, I think about Roy Jones Jr. and all these other yeah. uh, really and cool fighters that- Hook, yeah. Yeah, hook. yeah, yeah, like they break rules. They break rules to, to win, you know, like not legally, but I mean, um, you know what I mean? Like they break rules based on the biomechanical principles that they're, they were taught. They, 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 they change it up according to their own body mechanics and in order to win, right? Yeah. So- so and, uh, I think this speaks a lot to karate guys. Yeah, I, I think there's two points there with which I um, came across. One was the, the idea of this like aesthetic or this like perfect way of doing. Right. It's a lot in art which don't have that kind of pressure testing or that kind of competition base where you got to test your skill. So yeah. it becomes, you know, this is how to do a perfect punch, but you forget the purpose is to hit somebody with it. And if you have to change that up for yourself to make it work, yeah. then you can. And I think that's one thing. One of the things which, um, as I've been you know, teaching more um, and, you know, my, my, I'm with, working with my students, if there's, and, and usually, I mean, I mean, punches are punches and um, I, I usually find this works better with the grappling stuff. So if I'm teaching like somebody a throw, um, there'll be some people who are like struggling to get the throw and I'll say, oh, why don't you just adapt it or change it a little bit? And, yeah. and sometimes you see them, like they look of confusion, like I, I can change the instructor's technique. I'm like, well, yeah, because you've got to make it work for yourself. And, yeah. um, and then the other point was, uh, is that is the awareness of it. It's, it's like, you're, these people are doing, are breaking the rules, but they're breaking them on purpose. And yeah. I think people miss that sometimes and think, oh, he doesn't know how to do a punch or he doesn't know how to throw. I'm like, no, no, no. He, he's purposely doing it, you know, in air quotes, wrong. He, you know, he, he, he's doing it, that way for a certain way on purpose and that's to um you know to be effective and i think that, that that's an important point we need to remember is that you know you, you can do things the right way um if the if there is such a thing as the right way or you or you can do things um and 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 the the fight at garcia the boxer he, he's not he's not a you know he's not like a 50 year old grandmaster he's a relatively young kid right oh, he's a young guy yeah he's like he's, i think uh, i think he's he's in his 20s i think Really and that, yeah. like, like maturity and understanding that you know you know you can break concepts you know you don't need to be doing martial arts for decades to to understand you can do this you you just yeah. have an understanding and awareness that you can play with these things and you know there's more than one right way of doing something is my, my point on that really yeah to your to your point you know like i, I would like to uh I'd like to kind of just say something a little different from what you're saying, um, you know, and different from what Garcia is saying. I mean, they talking about breaking rules or, or doing it the wrong way. I'd like to put a positive spin on it, actually. You're actually customizing it. You're making it your own, you know. Um, you're, you're, you know, on, on the one hand, yeah, you're breaking the rules, but 
you're, you're, you're basically, you've evolved from that point where you've actually learned that jab or learned that, you know, the, the hammer fist punch in P9 or whatnot. Um, I mean, that's that one step, call it step one. That's the first step where you've learned that form. But then step three or four or five or six is that, is that same idea, but you've kind of modified it and changed it to, to, or broken it, if you want to say, but you've made it your own. Like you've customized it and made it your own. And I'm big on that. I'm big on making things your own, you know? And I mean, I think, you know, I'm very biased when I tell you these things, like I'm very biased in the choice of my videos. I'm very biased in the way that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sizing up these videos and critiquing these videos. But, you know, I, I've looked at both sides. I've, I've really like, see, I'm continuously trying to discover what's right, right and what's wrong for me and for my students. Um, and, and uh, you know, the people that I play with. And like, you know, if I continue to do it just the way I was taught, when I use it against other people that train in different ways and different styles and different arts, I get beaten. I oh, simply no. get beaten. I just get beaten. It so so I have opinion. to change. I have to change, right? It was, it was yeah. such an eye opener for me when I'd, I'd start like sparring a certain way and yeah. I was sparring other clubs. It's something I did a lot in my late teens, early 20s. And yeah. suddenly you realize when someone's plays by a slightly different rule set or, yeah. or trains a slightly different way, that, yeah. that there are gaping holes in what you do. I, I know what they, they do as well, but the idea is yeah. you want to be learning from them and, yeah. and you know, adapting things. <laughs> you, you do a, like in karate, for instance, in karate, there was always a big emphasis on like a reverse punch, especially yeah. during the sparring. Um, yeah. And it, it, it was so common that, uh, you know, you, you could see it coming a mile away and you knew it was going to happen. So yeah. I, I just changed it up and just did a lead, a lead low, low jab, like very, very yeah. JKD, Bruce Lee, you know, t the Tower of Jeet Do kind of style. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, he never scored in competition because you, yeah. it, like, you can't score from a jab. But when I was sparring, free sparring people, it was such a useful thing to, to add into the karate stuff because no one expected it. Um, sure. And, and you're learning, you're adapting, you're molding your game. And it wasn't a karate, you know, I, I was covering my head, which was always, you know, back then was a no no, your hands are up there on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or down. Yeah. It's kind of down, uh, right? Yeah. And strike. Um, yeah. And, and it, I, I like to keep my hands up. Like, I, you know, when there's, when there's pressure uh, and my hands drop, like, they'll drop to here. But even if they drop down low, then that, that's where all my head movement comes into play. You know, like, they're all useful, man. Like, all this sports <laughs> stuff is all useful, man. It's all yeah. useful. It, that goes yeah. up to your video three if you want to, Chris. If you yeah, want man, to. let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so video three uh, was uh, by one of my favorite coaches. Um, I, I, I can say I almost know this guy because uh, my coach, uh, Sam Lumpini, they're like brothers, these two guys. Um, Eric Paulson's based in the States, uh, and my coach is based here in Toronto, but uh, my coach always flies over to the States and visits him and stays with him. And um, he's, he's a, so Eric Paulson, he's, a, he's a, now an MMA coach, um, but uh, he, uh, uh, this particular video uh, focuses on, let me just bring it up here so we can take a peek at it. What's really cool, by the way, about um, Eric, Eric stuff is that um, I, I can't say I know him as well, but um, yeah. JKD lineage. Um, yeah, yes, right. is part of that. Um, so, so it's part of what I do in my JKD um, lessons um, when when I get back into them. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really familiar with Eric's work, and I, I didn't know. If you're aware of him, I, I, I was, it was quite nice when I clicked on the link and I saw Eric talking. I was Put like, a smile on your face. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I haven't um, caught any of his stuff on YouTube in a while. So it was nice to see that and nice to know that, you know, other karate guys are, are aware of his work. And, and now oh, I, yeah. you're a lot closer than, um, to him than I envisioned. So that, that was pretty awesome just to find out. There's, there's gold mine coaches everywhere, man. You know, like you just got to, if you strip off the styles and, all the biases that people have in, in their organizations about, you know, sport and other arts and stuff. And you just really just look objectively at what these guys are trying to say and offer to the martial art community. That's gold in itself, just right there, you know? So like I, so this video here, uh, it's called MMA for Sport or Street by Eric Paulson. Uh, it, it's, it's about a year old. Um, and so, like I said, Eric Paulson is an MMA coach, but like you said too, he's, uh, he's he comes from a, a wide variety of styles. Like he's done, He's done, oh my gosh, he's done Wing Chun, he's done, uh, he's done the JKD, he's done Muay Thai, he's done Silat, uh, he's uh, trained in Taekwondo, and he's done, I think, a bit of karate too, and so he's done, he's done it all, man. Uh, pressure test, you know? Yeah, he's, 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 he's got a, a, a great respect 
for so many arts and my coach, um, I trust my coach, uh, Sam Lumpini, like, like my brother, you know, um, and he says, listen, uh, follow Eric's work, you know, it's gonna, he's gonna help your karate. So anyway, this particular video um, is more, again, of a philosophical video. Um, and he's basically talking, I, I believe it's a seminar and he's talking to his guys at the seminar. I, I think it's just, he's just finished his training and he says, uh, you know, he wants, he wants his guys to, to instill more realism in his, in their jujitsu. Okay. And he's talking about jujitsu, but he's also talking about martial arts in general. And one of the quotes that, that really stood out for me was at the three minute and 20 second mark, where he's talking about how martial arts, uh, and I quote, um, uh, I, I paraphrase, I should say, martial arts ultimately is meant for self-defense, right? Um, yeah, even though you wear a gi, so he sees sometimes what he can't stand is you see people that wear gis and they're still applying a sport type of sure. reaction, you know? And, um, and that put a smile on my face because that's one of the biggest, uh, you know, biggest pet peeves in a lot of practical karate guys now that they, they're trying to say, look, look, Let's get away from the 3K. Let's get away from sport. Let's try to get the re let's try to get the realism in there and stuff. And you know, um, that's just karate guys talking. But you know, here's here's a guy from a sport, very strong sport background. But he, again, like I said, he's a traditional guy too. Um, irregardless of the titles, he's basically saying martial arts was developed for self defense. So his recommendations are, you know, when you're grappling, throw on some gloves. You don't have to kill each other, but start throwing some slaps in. Throw some shots, start varying up the range, um, throw in. So basically throw in a lot of hits and make it kind of make it real, you know, and that will change your game. Right. And, and he's, he's basically advising, you know, all of his guys at the seminar to do that. So I kind of I, I picked this because I, I I think that all of us, you know, even in our solo practice, when we're doing stuff in the air or when we're doing things on the bag, we should keep in mind the intent of what we're doing, you know, from a self-defense point of view, and when we're doing partner drills, you know, all of these things. I don't know. What's your take? Yeah, I, I, I had um, a recent chat with a mutual friend of ours, Jamie Club, about that and about mm. self-training. And for me, visualization is such a key part of this. Um, yeah. Because if you're just throwing like, punches or kicks or, or even moving, um, and one of your progressions isn't to have that visualization there, I think you're missing out from so much. I know when you were chatting with Ian, Ian mentioned the you know the importance of visual visualization as well. Um, he did. Yeah. Two, two of the things um, from Eric's video. Um, yeah. If you start with the the idea of martial arts were like originally developed for well, most martial arts were originally developed for self defense. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I wrote a few down here. Um, they're, they're all kind of like you know the the, the 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 Japanese kind of style. So you know your 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 art or your sport of judo. And Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at, you know, the, the original jiu-jitsu, like, lineage. Um, I think, like, I, Aikido came from, like, Daito Ru or, or, or a similar right. kind of um, combat art. And, and that didn't turn into a sport. That just turned into, like, a martial art, like an art form. Um, but right. it was, again, designed for, for you know, for self-defense. And, and karate right. the same. And karate turned into such a, such, such like, a, there's such a variance of the kind of sports of karate. There's, you know, your point... Um, and fighting, your continuous fighting, your your kata, your solo routine. So, so and they're lot, all good. All yeah, of them are good. And, yeah. And it, it comes down to the second point, which is um, being aware of what you're training for, which is kind of yeah. what you mentioned okay. to go back to the start. So if we, um, I, I think Eric makes a good point about some of the the sport, like the high level kind of counter for counter, like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling techniques, which you find. And they're fantastic yeah. if you're fighting a, you know, a high level, you know, martial artist, you know, if you're fighting a high level jujitsu kit, you need high level jujitsu. Um, yeah. um, but, but it's being aware that, you know, um, some, sometimes, you know, you can be too clever or you can be thinking too tactically from a sports side of things. If you're then, you know, when the guy can just slap you in the face, like you said. So it's just having that awareness of what you're training for. And yeah. like I said, man, I, I love it all too. You, you want to be training for both. Um, just make sure you keep in mind that you've got to, you know, you got to be able to visualize and be aware of what you're training for. So if you're training for, um, I think Eric says at one point, you know, sometimes he hears, oh, that wouldn't work in the street. And that, that's not necessarily a bad thing because, you know, it, it depends on what you're, you're training it for. And, you know, as a, as a practical karate guy who focuses a lot on what works in the streets, I get the other question or the other comment, which is, 
that wouldn't work, you know, in the UFC or he wouldn't work against a trained fighter. And I'm like, yeah, but the other stuff I train would. So it just depends on, you know, what I'm doing and the reasons I'm doing it. And there's things in both which you can play with and adapt and, and float over. And yep. you, you can take a lot from both sides. So um, like we said earlier, you know, a lot of the, you know, close range, trapping and striking for self-defense, you, you can adapt into the sports style. And, you know, you want to be playing with all this. You just got to be aware with, you know, what you're doing and the reasons for that. Be, oh, no, I, I, uh, I, I liked what you're saying in, in, in a sense that it, 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 it reinforces the idea of awareness and context and all these things. And I, I, I totally agree with you there. But there's one area that I'm not sure if, if, if we quite agree on. Um, but and, and, and I know I've, I've uh, kind of uh, uh, conceptually crossed heads with, uh, with a lot of my other friends, too, in that, you know, a lot of the things, how can I say it? Um, whenever we're doing whatever we're doing, you know, if we're going to be doing some sort of self-defense kind of idea or, or a tactic that we're working on, say, coming to the side, hitting and moving and stuff like that, I mean, I think we should always be thinking about countering the counter. We should always be thinking about being countered and being thinking about being countered for the counter. You know what I mean? Like always thinking one or two or three steps ahead, you know, as opposed to just like, uh, you know, just one, two, and that's it. And, and, and that comes with flow training and all these things. But the reason why I'm saying all this is, you know, this argument of, you know, this is not going to work against a trained fighter and here's why or whatnot. I think we should always be developing our stuff against a trained fighter. And the reason why is this, let's set our standards high. Our standards should always be high. Like, why would you settle? Like, if you're if you're gonna be if you're gonna be uh, uh, if you're gonna be like say entering some sort of a let's talk academics here. You're gonna or, or Olympics. If you're gonna be going against uh, uh, doing a swimming swimming competition, what, what wouldn't wouldn't you be training against the best possible swimmer? You you're gonna be studying studying uh, you know their techniques. You're gonna understand about their coaching history. Uh, and you're going to just get be on the top of your game, both from a nutri nutrition point of view and training point of view. You're just going to just be on the best, best. You're going to develop your best, right? So what I'm saying is like all these techniques, you know, that might work, or might might or might not work against a trained fighter. I, I'm, I'm thinking, forget about all that. Train the best you can be and always continuously think about being countered. And if you're always going to be thinking that way, then you'll always be, you'll be fluid. And that was going to change your, 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 your training game. Like, and I'm very biased when I'm thinking this. I'll tell you why. I train at a club where at an MMA gym where my coach is the biggest critic ever. Whenever he sees something, he says, oh, that's not going to work. And, and I, get, I can't stand it when he says that. And, but the point is he always proves me wrong because he can counter it. He can counter it. He can counter it. You know what I mean? And so I, I think I, I'm my, very, I've got your point. It's taken us 30 minutes, but we're disagreeing. So <laughs> if people yeah. stuck through it this long, they get into the good stuff now. Um, yeah. The first point, um, you should yeah. always be able to counter the counter. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eric mentioned, if we, because we're talking about this video, might, might as well throw yeah. this in there. The yeah. one, yeah. The, the karate people who said that, oh, you, you know, we don't train for takedowns. So we don't train on the ground because you can never take us down. Yeah. Really foolish thinking. Um, yes. Yes. I, my mindset is you're not going to take me down. But I, and and I'm, if I'm going to defend myself, I'm going to be like you're not taking me down. I'm going to hit you first. Yeah. But I, I'm aware enough to know that you can still take me. I can still miss. You can still yeah. catch me guard. So yes, yeah. I'm, you're not going to take me down. But I'm going to practice my sprawl defense. I'm going to yes. my sprawl. I, I'm, I'm going to practice my movement. I'm going to practice takedown defenses because yes. I know it could happen to me, and yeah. that'll be put into my sparring. And same with the, um, if we talk about trapping, because that, that's always one work, you know. You, so my trapping drills, they can go on 15, 16 traps long if they had to. You know, he's mm -hmm. the next one, he's the next one, he's the next one. Um, and, and I do train like that. But the idea is um, the, the reactions of the other person for my self-defense training, when I train that way, or my, my I have bad, I call it bad guy feedback. So. Yep. So, so if I'm doing um, a sparring drill, I'm going to be dealing with people who are trapping me with, with you know, technical traps and they know what they're doing. They're keeping their center line. They're keeping their posture. When yeah. I'm, I'm doing it against the bad guy, 
you know, they're not doing the refined, you know, you know, Wing Chun traps. So it's, it's they're trying to hit you. Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm trapping and I'm hitting them and they're hitting me and I'm trying to get rid of that. So yeah, perfect. So, so it's like a, it's a different way of, of like, like, like training. But I, I, I agree. You should be training for that extra hit every time. You should always, you should always have a backup plan and a backup plan and a backup plan and a backup plan. And a backup plan. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Where I think we disagree on is it was your second point when mm. you took swimming analogy. Um, yeah. Is because I don't think that the trained like, martial artist is necessarily the highest level. Um, this is where I, I think we're going to disagree. So it'd be nice to hear your, your, your comeback. Because I think we agree on the first part. Yeah. Um, but I, would, I would agree that you got to train and train and train um, to defend against the extra trap and the extra defense. Um, I think for for the second point is I'll I'll do an example of the um, headlock escape I was talking about earlier. Sure. Now a really you know technical perfect headlock escape which so if we talk about a guillotine choke is I will you know I'll I'll arch in I'll get nice and close I'll lift I'll throw out to take down I'll work into like a mount position and then I'll go for some kind of choke or triangle on on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's perfect, and and that when I've got somebody who really knows how to put a choke on. And really knows how to um, squeeze and knows how to counter and, and adapt and move into moving my arm. So I've got ways of appreciating all that things which could happen to me as I'm going through this technical escape. But yep. for my but for my self defense purposes, there's a lot of things that I don't want to be doing. So you know I don't want to be clinching if I have to because I've just made myself vulnerable to um, third parties. I don't want to be going on the ground unless I really have to, because I don't know what's on the ground. I'm assuming it's going to be soft, and that's an assumption I can't make. Um, and also, when I get to the ground in my you know, technical escapes, my high-level escapes, which are definitely going to work against people who know what they're doing, my head's going to be trapped for a while. I'm not going to be able to see. I've got no awareness. If there's people coming around and third parties joining a lot more than we think, they can be hitting and striking me um, you know, with weapons, and you know, I've got no awareness because my head's tucked in under the armpit of the other person. So for my self-defense side, I want to be, okay, how can I get rid of this headlock while standing up and while staying on my feet and being able to disengage so I can escape as quick as possible? So so for me, there there is that way of, you know, if, if I try and, you know, bite and, and grab and, 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 you know, reach for a leg on someone who knows what they're doing, they're gonna behave. Then they're not gonna react. They're they're just gonna just gonna choke me. Um, yeah. So, but 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 the guy on you know the guy who you know is, is trying to mug me when I, when I go to bite him or, or you know grab the inside of the leg or or you know rip back you know that th- they're gonna give me a different reaction. So yeah. but my drills are designed for each each you know each each scenario. Um, I see. But, but when 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 my biting my grabbing and my disengaging isn't working or he's yeah. really holding on. Then I've got to go to the other stuff, you know, the more sports stuff, because I have right. to. And so, so yeah. ignoring it is is a bad idea, and not having both. Um, I see. Does that make sense? I'm I'm just trying to. Yeah. The, the well, but then, kind of tactics. But then, and no, but then what you're saying. You yeah, what what you're saying then is is really not a disagreement to me. It's actually reinforcing what I'm trying to say. Maybe I just didn't really make it clear because so basically what you're 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 training to be holistic. You're seeing both sides. You're training against reactions against a trained fighter and an untrained fighter. And yeah. you're learning how to flow between both and just basically adapt to whatever's there, right? And and but and, and to me, that's being the best possible. To me, that's being a trained fighter yourself. You're you're trained in a sense that you're training yourself to adapt. Yeah. You know I, what I'm saying? So though, I think I think the only thing is like you said, like train for the highest standard. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if if I got what you meant by that, but what that by means- high standard, yeah, by high standard, I mean always expect that someone's going to be better than you. Yeah. You know, so uh, always expect that. So someone's going to going to out choke you, out punch you, out cardio you, you know, out strength you, you know, and 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 train for that and put that into your drills. Which from little that I've spoken to you just now, you are right. So I I'm always saying. Yeah. I would, yeah, I wouldn't prioritize the high, highly technical guillotine escape over the the biting, grabbing, and ripping my head out. So I'm still standing. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't prior, prioritize that in a self-defense situation. So I yeah. wouldn't go 
immediately to this guy knows how to put on a massive choke and something. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be thinking that. I'd be thinking he's just trying to hold me there with this choke. But true, true. true. If, if the choke starts, you know, if I can't do that, then then yeah. obviously yeah, then I would progress up, I guess, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Yeah. And and the thing is though, but to to, to your point, you trained it like like you you have to you can't ignore those those things, right? So like like no. I mean uh you know long time ago I'll keep this short because we'll talk about our next video next but uh long time ago you know I was of the thinking based on my instructors you know they were saying look you're you're probably not going to need anything to uh you'll just need this this and this for this treat because the the average Joe that you're going to come across is not going to know so much right but I disagree with that like I I I, I think I think because you never know especially now in this day and age with our internet uh, and with our accessibility to information, there, there are some really good bad guys out there. You, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, to make sense. I mean, I, th I think yeah. criminal violence like yeah. tends to say the same, but I, yeah. I, th I think most people underestimate the, the skills you need. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm with you there. I, I'm not sure yeah. if I agree how much we need, for the yeah, yeah, yeah. things, but I, I completely agree. I think a lot of people underestimate. Um, yeah. I know a lot of, um, I, I'm not, not knocking any art, um, but I, yeah. I'll name each. Because um, I know some great, I know, I know yourself, you trained in some great stuff. I've got friends who are trained in some great, great arts like this. But I, I've, I've known people um, like in the reality based world um, yeah, who, 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 who give you, and even karate guys do this as well, even practical karate guys, is they say, oh, you only need, you know, A, B, C, and D for, for you know, a groin kick, a finger jab, and a punch to the throat. And they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll solve all your problems. I'm like, why have I only <laughs> like 20 years of karate training then? You know, yeah. I only need those yeah. three techniques. It's like, you, you, yeah. yeah, we we tend, as martial artists, I think, we tend to underestimate what you need in self-defense. So um, yeah. Yeah. we're both saying, let's learn from wherever we can you know, mix it up, adapt it, and, and move forward. And I think, I mean, let's move on. Go on, I'll let you continue before we go to the no, final. No, la last, last thing, really short. Like, I mean, just, I had a good talk with one of my coaches the other day, um, and uh, he told me, he says, uh, you know, the chances of you coming up against, like, somebody highly trained and skilled to the point that can shut you down quickly and this and that is unlikely because guys like us, got us as in guys that are, I, I'd like to say that I, I train pretty holistically myself, um, and I'd like to put you in that category as well. I mean, we we train hard, and we make sure we know what we're doing and what we're saying and how we're guiding our our community. Right? Um, we're not gonna go out picking fights. We're not. We're gonna do the best we can to avoid. We're gonna actually help and and bring people together. Right? Like that's the whole. whole so the chances of us, the chances of me going against somebody like you, very unlikely. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So anyway, that's that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, I actually read something quite funny um, recently, which is, uh, it, it's, it's not true for, for men um, in the UK anyway, but it was like, you're, you're more likely be, to be attacked by somebody you know. Um, <laughs> if, 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 if all your friends know karate, then you know, you just got to learn to defend against that lunge, punch and front kick and you'll be fine. <laughs> so yeah, it's a sim similar vein. Anyway, then yeah. Chris, just before we wrap right. up, um, Last video. Four, if you don't mind. Yeah, man. Last video. Okay, so let me just bring it up uh, just to cue my memory here. So the last video was, um, yeah, it was called 10 solo boxing drills you can practice at home. And, uh, you know, it to me, it wasn't so much about the, solo, about the boxing drills, but it was about the idea behind the boxing drills, you see. And so that's one thing I want to iterate. Like I can take the, this kind of my choice and the way I'm, the, what I'm about to suggest kind of shows the way I think and how I learn and, and teach too. Um, so this video again was from uh, Fight Tips um, and it was, it's about two years old and it's basically a, one of the Fight Tips associates, uh, the coaches there, they're showing 10 drills that you can do on your own um, by yourself. And by the way, if you wanna do 10 solo drills, this is a good one to watch. But um, anyway, I picked up on this because when you take a look at um, what they're doing, they're doing it uh, they're, they're, they're utilizing all the five different punches, um, but they're not just doing it in one, in one direction. They're doing it in multiple angles. Um, they're changing the length of the punch. They're shortening it, lengthening it. They're changing stances. Um, and if you take a look at like from a karate lens, if you take a look at, at the stances, these guys are, 
uh, showing, I'm seeing shiko dots, I'm seeing cat stance, I'm seeing horse stance, I'm seeing back stance, I'm seeing all these stances, but I'm seeing them strung together in a fluid motion. Yeah. You know, They're being uh, used and, instead of done, so to speak. So, so, yeah. So. Yeah. So w when I see this video, I'm seeing fluidity. I'm seeing uh, which in which should inform our karate. I'm seeing taking multiple angles. I'm seeing staying defensive. You know, I find a lot of uh, uh, karate practitioners, you know, they'll keep their hands low um, for reasons. I mean, for their context, it's great. I mean, I know guys. I know guys that 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 train in all kinds of sports, and they can fight you with their hands down, but they have other attributes to compensate. You know, speed, mobility, you know, uh, head movement, and all these things, and angling, and just just the the, the way they built their legs, their muscles. Goes their back to and, that awareness we spoke about on video too. It's like it's like yeah. the ones you can hit are the ones who aren't aware their hands are down. Yeah. Yeah. You you know if the if the person knows their hands are down, it's it's usually because that they, they, they've got a game plan or or, or it's it's for it's for a reason. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's back to that. Um, and and just to add on what you're saying about about this video is um, I I did a video recently called um, Gidan Barai Low Sweep Progression. Yes, I love that one. I saw it. Yeah. It, it, it was only three or four four progressions. Um, but yeah. it was kind of on the like the same kind of like um the feeling of of, of this this video. Oh, but it's it's completely different. Um, you know, context and techniques. And I was only using yeah. one, and he's mixing, um, you know, a bunch up. And you could do that once you've got a bunch of, you know, Gidambrai, Aguki, Uri You could, you could do, do a similar thing with, with, you know, karate, you know, the Uki moves. Um, yeah. But one thing which you picked up on is, yeah, I really enjoyed how, you know, you can, you can do these, these punches or any technique because it's not about the technique; it's about the yeah. training method. The training um, method, yeah. With the Gidan Barai, you know, I was going into, you know, you can move your weight forward into front stance, cat stance, into Shiko Dachi, you can drop it okay, down. Yeah, I just wanted to react to what you're saying. So, like, to your point, I, I agree. Um, like, this video basically tells me it's like it's like a mixing pot. This this video gives you, uh, like, a soup bowl mix where where you can stir. You can stir stuff in. They, it, they're providing you a bowl. They're providing you a shape where smooth enough for you to put in ingredients and stir it and mix it. That's how I that's how I see it. This this conceptually aligns with karate unity. So, like for example, like uh, if I were to if I were to make a recommendation on how you can use this last video in your training, this is what I would recommend. Yeah, go I for it. I would basically I would basically take 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 any movement from your kata, any movement. Say you know like say for example the first movement in in Pukyo kata one, you know where you start off like this. Right, and you're doing that. You're doing the low block, and then you do the punch, and you do the low block again and punch, and then take take one kihon or part of it, like say even this part here, the with the part where you're doing that and going down. I mean, I interpret that as a head head clinch. You're taking the head and and, and going down, or and I interpret this as a whole bunch of things. Where I'm parrying and striking. I'm looking that on the inside. I'm looking at it as a crash, a crash. I'm looking that this as a pluck a pluck, a crash, a hit like this, and then kind of striking again, right? But then if you take a look at this video, it uses all kinds of angles and it uses in and out motion. It uses moving the head and all these things. So I'm thinking, use all that, use all that most in, in those movements. So like, you know, uh, you come in, you come in and turn, you can come in and hit and move, you can come and hit and step out, right? Um, and then you can go in and, and grab the head and move down and throw in a knee, or you put the head down and hit again, you know what I mean? Um, and then yeah. add in elements from everything you've learned in this mix and stir it all up, right? Um, I, I, uh, so I I saw this video and my, my first thought was that that's that's Chris Hansen's karate soup right there. That that that's it in <laughs> action. I I, I I I felt what you were you know I felt your vibe on that one. Um, and and, and just to, just to add on to that is yeah, the, please. Um, you know, you, we we talked about the Shuhari principle earlier, and mm. you know, your lovely T-shirt you're wearing there. You've got the, I think, if I got it right, learn, create, liberate. Yeah, um, that's it's pretty uh, much premised on that idea, man. Shuhari. Yeah. Yeah. So, so as you're talking, I'm seeing that you know you're 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 learning the individual moves, and I think I think that the instructor on the video um, yeah. mentions that very near the end. I think if I'm remembering right, is he said, you know, you learn the individual moves first, and then you yeah. start to put them together and to yeah. add in extra things so you, you know things you add into your soup for me yeah. you know making everything into a nice bowl and mixing it and changing it i have a very similar you know the progressive karate 
um, which is what I you know, label, what, what I get up to is a very similar thing is when you're, um, you're adding in all the extra progression. So you're adding in the movement, the change of stance, the angles. So it's a very similar concept as, as to what you have, which is why I think it's really cool to have these chats with you. And I, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to talk about. Um, Chris, I really, really enjoyed going through those videos with you. It was fun, man. No, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. And th thanks for this exercise. I think, you know, I think, you know, as, as uh, instructors, you know, we should be doing this more often, you know, like um, it's, and it's nothing new. I mean, I, I, I told you before we came on here, this is very much like a book talk. You know, like like in, in the literacy world, uh, book talks have been done like, oh my gosh, for, for ages, you know, where people read the same books or they read different books and they sit down and they gather around in a circle and they're sharing, sharing ideas or, or, or epiphanies they've had on certain pages and things. Um, why? So that to, to share the love of their learning, but also to, to kind of like to learn and teach and, 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 and promote things, you know, like I in a respectful way. So, I mean, dude, what you're doing, keep it up, man. And I, I think we should all, we can all learn from, from this type of exercise, you know? Oh, um, so yeah, thank you. Thanks, Chris.